Income tax 2022-2023, credits for qualifying children and other dependents, dependent questionnaire. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. We're looking now at the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, specifically at Dependents, Qualifying Child for Child Tax Credit, and Credit for Other Dependents because, of course, the Child Tax Credit and the Other Dependent Credit is wound up intimately with whether or not someone qualifies as a dependent. So the general thought process would be then, does someone qualify as a dependent? If they do, what are the tax benefits if they do? Well, if they're a qualifying, uh, if they qualify for the child tax credit, that would be the biggest benefit typically. And if I can't get that for the dependent, then possibly we can get then the support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Other dependent question. So let's go to the question ear here, which goes through this in a little bit more detail, a little bit more formally. And then if you see a gray area somewhere in between, you can drill down with more research, uh, possibly starting at the instructions here on the form 1040. Okay, step one. So do you have a qualifying child? So this doesn't necessarily mean for the qualifying for the child tax credit. It means a child qualifying child to be a dependent. And we want to keep those things straight or, or separate in our mind, especially when we get down to things like these age requirements. Okay, so first, a qualifying child is a child who is son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, brother, sister, stepbrother, stepsister, half-brother, half-sister, or decedent of any of them. For example, your grandchild, niece, or nephew, and was under age 19 at the end of 2022 and younger than you or your spouse of filing jointly. Normally that second bit, not usually important unless you have a weird situation, but you can imagine weird situations. So the age limit 19 or under age 24 at the end of 2022, a student to find later and younger than you or your spouse if filing jointly. So now we've got the age limits under 19 or under 24 at the end of 2022, uh, a student. So then you have to be thinking about what qualifies as a student and you could dive into that uh, in more detail in terms of what would qualify for a student for that age limit of 24 or any age and permanently and totally disabled. So permanently and totally disabled, the exception to the, to the general rules up top, which are under uh, 19, under 24, and then son, daughter, stepchild, and so on and so forth. And who didn't provide over half their own support for 2022. So they didn't provide over half their own support for 2022 and who isn't filing a joint return. If they were filing a joint return, you would think they would not be a dependent because they would be filing married filing joint for 2022 or is filing a joint return for 2022 only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid. So there could be an exception to that rule possibly if you had like a young couple or something like that. But general rule, not filing, not married because then they wouldn't be a dependent because they'd be filing mail, married, filing joint and who live with you for more than half of 2022. If the child didn't live with you for the required time, see exceptions to live with you. So now we've got, they lived with you for half of 2022. That gets into questions in terms of what does it mean to live with me? What if they're, they're they had to do go to the hospital or something like that medical conditions does that count for living with me and so on if you want to dive into some more details on those questions you could see the exception to time lived with you so uh 
if the child meets the condition to be a qualifying child of any other person other than your spouse if filing jointly for 2022 see qualifying child for more than one person later that's another area that gets into this muddy situation of well what if you have a joint custody type of situation and you think two spouses qualify well you can't have that same individual child uh, being a tax benefit on two tax returns you can't use the same social security number for example on two tax returns so you've got to you've got to parse parse that out uh number one uh do you have a child who meets the condition uh to be your qualifying child if yes you go to step two if no go to step four so if we go to step two is your child qual is your is your qualifying child your dependent if you go to step four then we're talking about someone who isn't a qualifying child possibly to see if they would qualify for the other dependent credit because they're not a qualifying child so we're going to go to step two here is your qualifying child your dependent one was the child a u.s citizen u.s national u.s resident alien or a resident of canada or mexico if you want more detail on that you can see publication 519 for more information if the answer is yes we continue on if no you can't claim this child as a dependent was the child married if yes we continue on if no then uh i'm sorry was the child married if yes see married person if no we continue on because if they're married generally then uh they wouldn't be a dependent so could you or your spouse of filing jointly be claimed as a dependent on someone else's 2022 return if the person who could claim you on their 2022 return is not required to file and isn't filing a 2022 tax return or is filing a 2020 return only to be claimed a refund withheld income tax or estimated tax paid uh check no see step one two and four so could you be claimed on someone else's return typically you would think uh the answer would no would be no because you would have a, a dependent that is dependent upon you if you were dependent on someone else then that would be kind of unusual they, that means someone else would be paying half of your support and you're paying half you so if yes uh, you can't claim any dependents uh, complete the rest of the form no you can claim this child as a dependent complete uh, columns one through three of the dependent section on page one of form 1040 or 1040 sr for this child then go to step three okay step number three does your qualifying child qualify you for the child tax credit or credit for other dependents now note this is a little confusing on the language because then you said first we said are they a qualifying child which sounds like you're might like well does that mean they're qualifying for the child tax credit no it means that they're a qualifying child qualifying as a qualifying child for the dependent as a dependent but now they're a qualifying child uh, and the question is do they now allow you to qualify for the child tax credit which has some added uh, rules here on step three which would be the biggest benefit typically for the dependent so this is the best one we would want if they don't qualify for that then what we may still be able to get the other dependent credit which we might be able to get on a qualifying child which doesn't qualify for the child tax credit or someone who isn't possibly a qualifying child but still qualifies as a dependent okay so did the child have an ssn social security number or itin or adoption taxpayer identification number and a10 issued on or before the due date of your return including extensions answer yes if you are applying for an itin or a10 for the child on or before the due date of your return if yes we continue if no you can't claim the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents number two was the child a u.s citizen u.s national u.s resident alien see publication 519 for more details if yes we continue if no you can't claim the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents number three was the child under age 17. so now we have another another age so this is getting kind of confusing right because we said the qualifying child was like 19 or 24 if they were a student but now we have the 17 which is the one so if they're a qualifying child doesn't necessarily that this age limit isn't 19 or 24 that's to qualify as a dependent as a qualifying child but now we're seeing if they qualify 
they're a qualifying child and would qualify for the child tax credit. And there you have the age limit of 17 at the end. So was the child under age 17 at the end of 2022? Uh, if yes, continue. If no, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this child, meaning you don't get the child tax credit, but you get the default other dependent credit in that case. So if they were the qualifying child, but they were 18 or whatever to 24 qualifying student, then you don't get the bigger credit, even though they're a qualifying child because they don't meet the age test, but you might still get the other dependent credit for them, or you should, you would think. So number four, did this child have an SSN number, social security valid for employment issued before the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions? If yes, you can claim the child credit for this person. If no, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this child, check the other dependent credit. All right, so that's gonna be the questionnaire there. And then we skip on over to part four here, which you'll recall, if we didn't have the qualifying child, then the question was, okay, well, do, could we still get an other dependent credit? So remember the thought process is, are they a dependent? Are they a qualifying child for the dependent, which is different to whether or not they qualify for the child tax credits. If they're a qualifying child, then do they meet the more restrictive requirements, including the age test to be, to get the better credit, the qualified, the child tax credit. And then if they're not a qualifying child, well, could they still qualify as an other dependent, which we're skipping down here to step number four. So is your qualifying relative your dependent? A qualifying relative is a person who is son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, or descendant of any of them. For example, your grandchild or brother, sister, half brother, half sister, or a son or daughter of any of them. For example, your niece or nephew or father, mother, or an ancestor or sibling of either of them. For example, your grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, or stepbrothers, stepsisters, stepfathers, stepmo stepmothers, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, or any other person other than your spouse who lived with you all year as a member of your household if your relation didn't violate local law. So if the person didn't live with you for the required time, see exceptions. So we have a very expansive uh, first basic test here, qualifying relative for the first test, quite expansive. But notice we, we have the living with you, any person who lived with you all year as a member of your household. And if there's exceptions to that, like they were had medical conditions or something like that, you could see the exceptions to time lived with you to see if that would qualify as in essence time living with you. Okay, so and who wa who wasn't a qualified child? So obviously they can't be a qualified child because now we're, if they were a qualified child, then they wouldn't be here as an other dependent. They would be, they'd be a qualified child and you'd, we'd be up there. We wouldn't be down here in step number four. So of any taxpayer year 2020. So for this person, a person isn't a taxpayer uh, if the person isn't required to file a U.S. income tax return uh, and either doesn't file such a return or files only to get a refund. Okay, and who had gross income less than 4,400. So there's the kicker. That's a pretty low threshold. Notice the prior one, I just want to point out again, it wasn't a qualified ch child of any taxpayer, right? So usually you would think be thinking about yourself. Do the, if, does this person qualify for you as a qualifying child or not? But okay, so in any case, here's the kicker. Who had gross income of less than 4,400 in 2022? That's pretty low threshold for the gross income. So if the person was permanently and totally disabled, you can see the exception to gross income test uh, in that case, and you can go into more detail there. And uh, for whom you provided over half of the person's support in 2022, which seems kind of redundant because if they're your dependent and they made under $4,400, you would be providing more than half the support, but there's that one as well. But see children of divorced or separate parents, multiple support agreements, and kidnapped child later for more detail there. Okay, one, does any person meet the condition to be your qualifying relative? If yes, we continue. If no, we stop there. 
Two, was your qualifying relative a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, U.S. resident alien, or resident of Canada or Mexico? See publication 519 for the definitions and so on. If yes, we continue. If no, you can't claim the person. Number three, was your qualifying relative married? If yes, see married person later, you would think normally it would be no because it would be if they were finally married, they would be finally married joint return, which normally would mean they wouldn't be a dependent situation. So four, uh, could you or your spouse of filing jointly be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return? Now, normally, if you were a dependent of someone else, it would seem kind of odd that you have someone dependent on you because if you were a dependent of someone else, they would be providing more than half your support generally. So if the person who could claim you on their 2022 tax return is not required to file and isn't filing a 2022 tax return or is filing a 2022 return only to claim a refund or withhold income tax or estimate a tax paid check, no, see steps one, two, and four. So if yes, you can't claim any dependents. If no, you can claim this person as a dependent complete column one through three of the dependents section on page one of form 1040 or uh, 1040 SR, then go to step five. Step five, does your qualifying relative qualify you for the credit for other dependent? So obviously you would hope that they would because that's the main benefit of having them as, a, as the dependent. Number one, did your qualifying relative have an SSN, social security number, I-10 or A-10? issued on or before the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions? Answer yes, if you are applying for an I-10 and so on. Same thing we've seen in prior iterations. So we're gonna say yes, if yes, we continue. If no, you can't claim the credit. Number two, was your qualified relative a US citizen, US national or US resident alien? You could see publication 519 for more detail. If yes, you can claim the credit for other dependents, woohoo. For this dependent, uh, check the credit for other dependents box in column four of the dependents section, page one of form 1040-1040-SR. If no, you can't claim the credit for other dependents. So there's the general concept. Now note that if you have any issues where they fall into that gray area, you've got a, a, a split custody situation or something like that, or someone, they lived with you, but some something happened so they weren't with you the whole time like they were having medical conditions or something like that so the gray areas on any of these tests you could start here to kind of dive down on more detailed uh more detailed information from here and you could find the instructions for the form 1040 in the irs website irs.gov irs.gov